Hi, welcome to D Australia. Today we're going to go over fuel tanks. Uh, we get quite a few calls regarding the best way to set your fuel tank up for easy filling and uh, it's an area where we see a few bad results from uh, clunk lines falling off and uh, just generally uh, poorly assembled fuel tanks and fuel systems in general. Um, we see quite a few come in with engines misfiring, not running right and a lot of times it leads back to just a badly set up fuel system. Now we'll start with the fuel tank, this is a Gebro fuel tank, honestly probably one of the better ones on the market. There's a few guys mucking around with soda bottle ones, don't see the purpose really unless you want something super super light but then again when they're light they're fragile. These things are pretty durable, they don't really weigh that much and they're quite inexpensive. Now when you set up your, uh, your cap and your clunk line etc, you'll notice on this one we put an SWB alloy tank cafe on this one and the first other thing you will notice is we've got barbs on the ends of the inlet and the vent line. Now these barbs stop the fuel uh, hose from slipping off. It's essential you put something on here because fuel lines slip off quite easy and Tigon gets a little more malleable and quite slippery when it's, when it's wet with fuel. So these little fuel barbs here, as Mark can zoom in on that, are available from Jubro. Now you can get them in various sizes, 532 or 1 8 to suit whatever line. Now uh, 532 will suit from 32 ounce tanks and up and the 1 8 will suit the 20 ounce tanks, 24 ounce tanks and 16 ounce etc. So pick whichever one you like. But these little items here are essential, they're very easy to put on. Uh, you, all you need to do is to solder them onto the end of the tube. They go on quite easy. A little bit of solder on the end of there and it isn't coming off. Okay now once we get into the tank first thing you'll notice is it's all set up. I've uh, already pre-bent the vent line, put on the clunk line and you'll notice inside uh, I have a piece of tube there. This is to stop the whole thing from bending backwards inside the tank and pinching itself off kind of like that. Now uh, on some of the smaller tanks this isn't essential. Usually on a 50 ounce tank this is a good piece of information and probably worthwhile doing. There's a lot of room in there for it to move around and when it gets really soft it can buckle backwards and pinch itself off and I, I believe it's worthwhile. Now from 32 ounce tanks and above I'd consider this. On the smaller ones I don't think it's necessary but uh, it's, a, it's a good idea. You'll also notice we have the barbs on here and a zip tie to keep them located. And also notice we have the brown gas bung. Now not all the Jubro tanks come with the gas bunk uh, as standard equipment on 24 ounce and under they only have the globe one, which is the black chap, this one here. If you're running gasoline engines, throw it in the bin. You don't need it. Uh, you've got to remember to use this one. What happens with this is this breaks down into very small particles, eventually starts leaking, but goes all through your fuel system, and it's heck of a messy. So throw it in the bin when you get it if you're not using it. If you're ordering the 16 ounce tanks and under, uh, uh, 16 to 24 ounce tanks, you'll need to order a gas stopper to suit your needs. With the 32 ounce, 40 ounce, and 50 ounce, this comes standard, you get both in there. So remember to do that. Now once all that's set up, as I can say, I've used the, the SWB alloy cap. I like these because you can do them up quite tight. You can do them up excessively tight. You can actually split the tank if you're not careful. Uh, you can build them up nice and snug. These items tend to uh, bow out a little bit and get a little bit distorted. Yeah, it's just a little bit of bling on the front of your tank there, but it is does serve a purpose and it is slightly better than the standard Jubro item. But this works essentially okay. This is just slightly better. Now once you've got all that done, you've got to run all, plumb all this up to your engine. Now, the way we like to do it and the way I like to see it happen is um, I only like two, two, two lines in my tank. I like a vent line and a clunk line. Now a lot of guys will get run a third line, which is a fill line. Uh, don't have a problem with a fill line, that's fine. It means you have to run another clunk line or permanently have fuel on your tank. It makes it difficult to, vent, to drain your fuel tank. Uh, I prefer to put a T-piece through my clunk line on the, way to the, on the way to the engine. Now essentially what I'll do is I'll have a T-piece such as this Festo item in place between the engine and the fuel tank going to my clunk line and from the T-piece it will go to a fuel dot. Now that's where I'll be doing all my filling from, it's from the fuel dot. Now on the commercial market there's available quite a number of inline fillers which require a probe to push it in, easy fill stuff. To be honest I've never had one that works. 
uh, they all leak eventually and will cause you problems. A, a stopper or a fuel dot such as this Seacraft unit plugs off the end of the fuel line so nothing can leak, no air can get in. When you are actually filling through the, through the clunk line via the T-piece, it's essential that no air gets in. So do yourself a favour, use a fuel dot. Uh, all those other commercially available fuel probes uh, and easy fill things, never seen one work. You're wasting your time, in my opinion. Uh, just go straight to fuel dot. It's simple, it's secure and it works really well. And once you've done that, the next thing in line you need to put in is a fuel filter. Now, there's a lot of bunkum out there about running fuel filters and you shouldn't do it and I can't tell you how many times someone tells me but I filter my fuel from my can, I've got two filters coming out of the can but when we get the engine and you open it up there's potatoes growing in the carburetor. Reality is you need to run a fuel filter and that needs to go on the other side of the T-piece, between the T-piece and the engine, not between the T-piece and, and the fuel tank. The problem with it, with it being in between the T-piece and the fuel tank is every time you fill it up, it traps, it traps fuel here, but every time you suck it down, uh, all the dirt that's trapped here by the filling process goes back up towards the carburetor. It needs to go on the other side between the T-piece and the carburetor. Now, you'll also hear a couple of other little fallacies about when, you, when you're filling with a fuel pump, electric fuel pump through the clunk line, it will blow the diaphragm in your carburetor or flood your engine. It's absolute poppycock, won't happen. It takes about 16 psi to blow off the needle and seat on a, uh, on a, on a Walbro carburetor. Your fuel pump won't do that. Uh, I've never seen a diaphragm tear, I've never seen an engine flood uh, because of the, f the filling process using a fuel pump. So you don't need to believe that. Now if you do these simple processes and make sure you keep all, of the, all, your, all your systems uh, nice and clean and tidy. Make sure you zip tie and use the barbs on the on the inlets and then your fuel lines won't fall off. I can't tell you how many times we hit people with problems and they don't zip tie the clunk line on and this little chap just ends up floating around the back of the fuel tank. Uh, it happens a lot. Uh, so this is how we set our systems up. If you've got any questions, give us a call. We're happy to talk about it.